folks, my name is Dr. Mahajan. I'm an internist, a board certified internist. I've been practicing in Pinellas County for 25 years. Um, I have a practice in Largo, on Clever Largo Road. Me and my wife, we are two physicians and we got four nurse practitioners. So we got six provider practice. And I go to Mom Plan and Largo Medical Center. So I'm still around in my hospital, so I'm a dinosaur that day. <laughs> All right, so what's on the agenda today? We're gonna to talk today, uh, as you can see, four aspects, similarities and difference between IBS, which stand for irritable bowel syndrome, IBD, which stand for inflammatory bowel disease, and diverticulitis. So those are the three main areas we're gonna to cover today. And what causes those disorders, how you uh, find out if you have them, what can you do to, if you have them, what can you do, or if your loved one have them. Uh, this is the powerhouse for digestion, the small bowel. So it's very long, and it has the advantage of uh, juices coming from the gallbladder, uh, which is right here, and the pancreas, which is right behind it. So it gets those juices right there is the pancreas. The green thing. It gets the juices into the small bowel. So the, the gut bacteria is gut health. That's how important they are. And if you don't, so it's like gardening. If you don't have a good compost and good watering, good sunlight, you don't get good bacteria and you don't get good plant health. Same thing inside the gut. You gotta think like a gardener. You gotta give them prebiotics, which is like onions, garlic, ginger, herbs. So those are like fertilizers. And then you gotta give fiber. So they can get small particles here and they can get entangled like a nest. So they, they're like birds. You gotta give them fiber, otherwise they don't nest, they, you know, and you don't get healthy bacteria. So prebiotics and then nesting material, the fiber. So we don't know what temperature those capsules or tablets have been stored the probiotics tablets or capsules. So you, you may be just spending gazillion dollar on something fancy, which they said will send you a bottle in the night infomercial and that cured, you know, uh, Biden's gut health or something. And then we'll get you a free one next to it and you buy those have, paying $50 or whatever and you may get garbage. The small bowl and the, yes sir. And what quantities should you be looking at? So anything and everything in moderation, my friend. Very good question. Uh, people go overboard. They drink the whole gallon of key for a day and then they get diarrhea. They say, hey doc, you know, I, got, you, I took your advice and now I'm shitting. <laughs> uh, so, you know, okay, <laughs> don't take it overboard. So moderation, yes. All right, so we, we are already touched on a lot of these areas and I'll go over one more time because I think that's the crux here. Um, small meals more often. Now decreasing the size of portion instead of three large meals, if you can do five small meals, why? The gut get chance to produce the juices. You know, it can, it's like uh, I was talking to, in the kitchen you want slow and cook food. Same thing in the gut. If you give five small meals, the cooking from the juices is much efficient. The gut doesn't have to hurry, this big meal, you know, half of it goes undigested. You don't <clears throat> absorb the minerals, the vitamins from the food. If you have five small meals, it gives you, you've got enough time to say, okay, I got it. And the timing of the food is important too. So my professor of nutrition used to say, and I still hold true, eat your breakfast like a king, lunch like a queen, and dinner like a pauper. Why? Walking exercise, movement, what, when you do the most throughout the day, right? You're not gonna take a dinner at 10 p.m., a big meal at Olive Garden, you're gonna go for a walk, you're gonna go to bed. But what's gonna happen to the food? You don't walk, the food don't walk. It sits there and then you get heartburn and bloating and you're passing gas and your wife divorces you. Yeah. The food with fiber, with the slow cooked food, the beans, the lentils, the superfoods, the hemp seeds, the flax seeds, the chia seeds, you make smoothie. I'm okay with smoothie. Just put some spinach, put 
put some chia seed, put some lime in that, you know, apple, bananas, whatever. But don't throw the fiber away. Eat that too. Don't. <laughs> People will say, oh, you know, doc, I'm juicing. I said, okay, what are you doing with the fiber? All that I'm throwing away. I said, you're throwing the most important part, the fiber. Fiber is gold. So please keep the gold. Don't throw the gold away. Uh, water intake, we talked about that, six to eight glasses per day. Very important to do these three things and you will have good gut health. All right, so in review, what's the moral of the story? The moral of the story is, as this young lady said with her wisdom, everything is connected. The mind is connected with your body, the body is connected with your gut. If you do poor lifestyle, you'll not have good gut health as simple as that. So if you take one thing from this talk, walk 30 minutes five times a week, drink six to eight glasses of water a day, don't throw the gold away, which is your fiber. If the food does not have fiber, spit it out. Processed food has no fiber, that's why it's quick. So if you, if you know the food is cooked quick, run. It'll help you exercise by running, Plus, you won't eat that processed food. 